This is a video showing a step-by-step -step process of a hair painting that I created. Um, there's two reasons why I wanted to make a video. First, because I think the step-by-step -step process is quite useful. It means you can pause it at any time and go back and forth between stages. But also because in this particular case, um, the picture didn't quite go as I wanted. It's very tempting to tell you that I set out to do exactly what I finished doing, but that's not quite true. Um, it went through a stage in the middle where I was very unhappy about it and um, was considering putting it on a scrap pile and then decided to try something else. So hopefully this is something that uh, might help people learn how to deal with something they're not so happy about. So the first stage, I created a, a background out of watercolours. So I'm using Bockingford 200 pound knot paper here and I'm using White Knight's watercolour paints. I've used carmine, indigo and cadmium yellow and I wet the paper first and then I made up a, a, a fairly runny mix of each of these three colours and I've just dropped them in on the paper allowing them to blend a little bit together here and there but not over painted and stirred them up together. So I've got this quite colourful but relatively pale background it's a nice way of taking the white off the paper and sometimes that's a bit less scary to start and it's certainly in a, a way I like to paint sometimes especially when I'm using pen work over the top. The first stage of the drawing has been done to allow room all around the subject but particularly in front and this is something I think is quite important if you're doing people or animals in the direction that they're looking it's useful to give a little bit more space so that you don't feel they're in some sort of box where they're looking right into the edge of the paper. So in this case the hair is facing to the right and I've allowed a little bit more space in front of his nose on the right hand side. I've fitted him so that there's plenty of space around him. It's always important considering this. You might start out thinking you're having a quick sketch and then unbeknownst to yourself you produce a masterpiece only to find that you've squashed it into the paper and you can't possibly mount or frame it nicely, which is always a shame. So give yourself some space around it. Um, I've also used my background here, although it's a completely random shape, which I'd created um, totally aside from this painting, so I didn't know what I was going to do with it when I created the background. There's marks in it which I'm using, so there's a, a fairly dark area of the indigo in the middle with a lighter patch above it and I've taken that as the front of the hair's face and where the eye might sit. So sometimes a background is a good way of giving you ideas of what you might put in it as well. It can offer up patterns and shapes that you might not realise. So I've started drawing very lightly and I'm using just a normal biro for this because I can produce some very fine lines um, and I can press a bit harder and it's just a useful tool that most of us have got sitting around. This next stage I've added a little bit more detail, I'm starting to define some of the shapes and I've added the eye. Um, he looks a little bit shocked at this stage but that's fine, it's early days. A little bit more detail still added and you can see I've finished the eye more by um, giving quite a heavy layer of the biro around it and also doing most of the pupil, just leaving a little gap at the top where it might be catching a highlight. Um, I've darkened his nose. I've also defined the little area of his muzzle which is actually quite light on the paper which works reasonably well. And I've started to suggest a little bit more of the furry effect with a few lines around the front and back and across his little shoulder area. I started painting in the eye at this stage using cadmium yellow and a bit of the carmine mixed with it to create the orangey tone. Um, I've left it paler at the bottom which works well if you have a highlight at the top which it doesn't have a huge amount of at this stage because there was already dark behind it so whilst the eye is taking shape it's a little bit sludgy and not terribly lively at this stage. This next stage I've started to use the three colours that I had the indigo, cadmium yellow and the carmine 
and I've mixed them a little bit on the palette. I've mixed them really more than I intended so that I'm getting much more dull, slightly dead brown shades rather than a little bit more colour, which is what I wanted. But they're still relatively pale, which is giving a reasonably nice effect. This is where it's all gone terribly wrong. So our poor little hair has met um, what looks like a, a brutal accident on the highways. Um, so it's a good example of showing perhaps I've gone far too dark with the colours and a little bit strong with the carmine, which does make him look rather unfortunate around the neck area. And uh, generally I'm going much darker than I intended. So the background, which was going to be a nice subtle colour, um, which would harmonise with my hair painting. The background's getting sort of paler and lost because the colours are getting far too strong. But generally, he does look like he's just met a sticky end, which wasn't my intention at the beginning. So, things progressed from, from bad to worse. Um, I didn't leave it there. I started uh, painting a bit more, still going in with colours which really were too strong, but having got the strong pink and carmine on before, I was trying to uh, even that out with, with other dark colours. But all I'm really creating is a kind of uh, bunny of the dead look. Not not quite my intention, as you can imagine. It's far too dark and also much too greyish and, and dull in colour. He still looks a bit startled in the eyes, which is not really helping with the whole zombie look, I don't think. So this is the stage where I was more or less ready to stick him in the bin, but not being the sort of person that bins things quickly, I tend to leave them on one side, which is always worth doing. Those of you out there who like to just tear things up and stick them in the bin, you know who you are. Have a little bit more patience, leave them to one side, and uh, that's what I did with him, and I thought, what can I do to improve this? There's not much more I can do to, uh, to make him much worse, so surely there's something I can do to improve him. So I thought about using acrylics or pastels, something that I could put on top of the watercolour. So I've decided to try pastels and I've used quite a bit of white here, using a stick at this stage. And I've added white, blended it a little bit and then added more white which I've left unblended. And already the picture's gone a lot lighter. So he's back on track really, although the colours are still a bit dull, he's more harmonious with his background again. He's not quite so dark and gloomy looking. So this next stage I've added some very pale peachy colour. It's a lovely bright sort of neon pale peach um, and this is in a set of um, Inscribe or Mungyo soft pastels which are quite a, a reasonable range of pastels. I use an awful lot and they're, they're quite cheap which is great. So it's one of my favourite colours, so I've slapped quite a bit of that over him because I wanted to brighten him up, make him look a little bit more like he was in the sunshine rather than walking in fields of darkness. And uh, I think he's, he's getting a more sort of sunny tone about him there, which is nice. So this next stage, I've added a lot more in the background because the hair himself was getting a lot of colour on, but again the background was that very pale wishy-washy look and because I'd gone a lot darker than I intended the background was getting a bit left behind so I've used my pan pastels here because of covering a much bigger area and I use them with sponges like the teardrop shaped makeup sponges that you can buy so I've used a mix of colours here you can see the purple and some blue and there's a bit of a sort of terracotta -y colour mixed in as well but I'm darkening around the hair, leaving his edges quite pale in places, which gives the impression of the light catching him and bringing him forwards out of the background a little bit more. This is helpful to create a better sense of depth in a picture like this. So I've done a little bit more, mainly on the hair himself, the background's similar to it was before. So I've added some stronger tones of terracotta -y brown colours just to make him a little bit more natural hair look and not quite so sort of greyish and purple. So I've carried on warming him up a little bit. He seemed to be developing a slight buck tooth at this stage, which whilst quite cute, it was not my intention. <laughs> 
So this next stage, I've taken the colour a little bit brighter again, and I've used a really, really bright neon pink, which again is one of my favourite colours. And you can use as much or as little as you like, but just little suggestions of this colour really bring a painting to life. I've used quite a bit on his ears because I like the idea of the sun shining through his ears and perhaps lighting up the, uh, the blood vessels and being a bit pink. And where I've used the pink on his face, I've not blended it so well. And on the watercolour paper, it gives quite a rough texture, which I quite like. It makes me think of furry, messy sort of hair, which uh, I think works reasonably well on this. I've also used a little bit of the pink in his eye because the colours I used going on top of the indigo as they did, they'd got a little bit duller than I'd, I'd have liked really. So I've used the pastel, a little bit of the pink and I think some of the orange as well and just redone the eye to brighten that iris colour. At this stage I've started adding a little bit more rough texture and detail in the suggested sense, so the detail is very much scruffy and made to look like hair and sort of ragged hair rather than very very neat and tidy. So I've used a, a dark pinky purple pastel to just add a little bit more of this colour. And at this stage I've gone back to some little bit more darker colour in places. The background um, down the front of his face had left quite light so to set that off I've darkened his face a little bit against it so that brings his face out with a much stronger contrast in the background and then I've added just a little bit more darks and lights on his body and neck again adding to that scruffy sort of messy look I've also given him some whiskers at this stage as well and that's important to get a quite a loose free movement so it's worth practicing whiskers because if you draw a whisker and then stop it doesn't have the same effect as if you manage to put the pastel or a pencil on and do a line which you you flick and allow to bring up at the end you'll get a much more natural shape and then to finish him off all I've really done is add a little bit more white to this just around this little whisker area um, and I think I'm quite happy with that really in the end it's, it's turned into something which I really quite like um, very different to how he started and particularly different to how he went through his um, rather tragic phase halfway through so I was pleased with the end result I hope you have a go yourself <laughs>